Today we are talking about all things sensory. And parents, this is huge because if your sensory input system is not working right, if your child's sensory system is disconnected, it is going to affect so many aspects of their development. And it's gonna show up with symptoms like speech delays or focus in, in school issues or behavioral challenges and so much more. So let's talk about what is going on with sensory processing disorder in these sorts of challenges. There's really two types that this could show up as. One would be overstimulation of sensory input. And what that means is that noises or sensory clothing things like tags or socks or pants or different types of textures set somebody off, maybe food textures bother them. There's some sort of sensory stimulation that is not able to be processed well. And so they're oversensitized and now they're having issues with these external stimuli. The other option would be sensory seeking behavior. So if your kid's sensory proprioceptive feedback loops aren't working, well now they're going to be seeking out all of that extra stimulation, stuff like head banging or not really a good spatial awareness, they're running into stuff, they're feeling clumsy, uncoordinated, any aspect of those, either hypersensitized or not really the proper um, spatial awareness or input coming in, it all comes back to the same thing, which is their nervous system. Their central nervous system is not properly perceiving what is going on. The noise that they're hearing or the texture on the clothes isn't being perceived right because it's irritating and it's bothering them. And a lot of times kids that are dealing with these sort of challenges, they've gone through a lot of different therapies and things to help, right? Because it's gonna show up as speech or emotional regulation things. Maybe they've done OT, they've done nutrition and diet and supplement changes. They've done different therapies, but they tend to be still stuck. Maybe they're seeing improvements, maybe there's been positive changes, but there's still some sort of limitation going on because those tend to miss the root issue, the root cause. And that root issue is that their central nervous system, what's called the ANS, the autonomic nervous system, is not properly taking in this information. So when we think about it from that perspective, we start to ask different questions. Why is our nervous system so disconnected? Why is our neurosensory system not regulating information properly? Well, there's a lot of different ways that can take place. Uh, early on in life, our ANS is one of the first things to develop. So when there's pregnancy stress, when we're going through that prenatal season of life and we are in a hyperarousal survival mode state, it's going to trigger and set that kid up for more stress, more, um, more survival mode. That's gonna be their default mode. The same thing is true of early on in life. Because the most sensory rich proprioceptive area is this upper neck area, birth trauma, birth injury tends to take place up here either from forceps, from vacuum extraction, from C-section, from any sort of extra birth stress, that is going to also set off this sensory proprioceptive feedback loop because now this really key sensory system isn't getting the most important information that it needs. That also is gonna be the reason a kid is extra fussy and colicky, they have torticollis and plagiocephaly, meaning they can't rotate and turn their head well, and a whole mess of other different baby challenges that are connected to these same sensory issues later on in life. So those are the big ones, pregnancy, birth trauma, but really any of what we call the three T's, physical, chemical, emotional stresses, or thoughts, traumas, and toxins, hence the T's. Uh, any of those extra stressors is going to create this hyperarousal in the sensory system. So here's the cool part. We have a test for that. There we go. Uh, we have a test that can measure that, right? Our scans, there's three different ways we can assess that neurosensory system. The one that I've got on the screen here, this is our neuromuscular activity analysis. So this is measuring more or less how much sensory input is the body bringing in. And this is a wild example because this kid um, was way, way over the top with sensory input, which was showing up in a ton of different life things. Uh, the little bit you can see there uh, probably looks like a lot of red, right? There's a lot of negative color there. The normal findings on these scans, we would want white normal bars. This one was almost all red. Uh, when we quantify that sensory input, it's supposed to be right around 100. This one was almost, I know it was over 400 if I remember right. So just at rest, nothing else going on. There is four times as much sensory input going into the brain than there should. So of course, this is going to be a kid who struggles with all of the stuff that we're talking about. So we love getting to test it, we love getting to measure it. And that's the question I have for you is, if your kid is dealing with some of these challenges, they've probably had their eyes and their ears and their nose and their throat and their heart and their lungs and all these other things checked out already, what about the central nervous system? What about your brain that controls everything else? That's what we do, we'd love to help. So if that sounds like your situation, please reach out and uh, let us know how we can best help your family thrive.